hope this is in focus is how I begin every video. And welcome back comrades before we begin make sure to like and subscribe for leftist content i'm sure you won't find anywhere else let's get right into it our topic for today my most anticipated topic my most exciting topic my most important revolutionary informative topic i could possibly share who are the black panthers inner workings and the meaning of this. Let's get into the inner workings and the meaning of a black revolution and why black people have a right to take what's theirs. So for those of you that don't know, the Black Panther Party was a revolutionary socialist black organization born of the black liberation movement of the 1960s. The Black Panthers were founded by Bobby Seale and my favorite Marxist of all time, Huey P. Newton. What's important to understand about the civil rights movement and what many schools fail to remind us is that the black community was largely divided on how to attain civil rights. Um, you had people on MLK's side who were very Gandhi, very nonviolent, um, very sit-in, you know. There were Malcolm X and his followers that believed that the only reasonable response to white violence is violence. <laughs> Guess which side I'm on. Guess which side Bobby Seale and Huey P. Newton were on. After the assassination of radical activist Malcolm X, Bobby Seale and Huey P. Newton finally founded the original Black Panther Party in Oakland, California, with Seale as chairman and Huey as minister of defense. The BPP spoke to young black radicals who weren't gonna take the oppression of the system that their parents had took. One of the first things Seale and Newton did was draft the 10 point plan to black liberation, which were a list of demands set to counteract the black oppression created by the state. The demands ranged from reallocations of things like resources, like education and housing, to more radical ideas like the exemption of black men from military service. Let it be known that I agree with every facet of the 10 point plan. One of the biggest characteristics of the Black Panther Party was their pro-gun stance. Many Black Panthers believed that the only way to protect black communities from incidences of police brutality were armed black people. Seal and Newton would follow police squad cars around with guns and law books to make sure that no incidences of police brutality could happen. When officers asked them to leave, my man Huey was like, oh no, 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 no. A California citizen actually has the right to watch a police officer carry out his duty. And if you ask me to leave, you'll be infringing upon that right. Huey P. Newton was a former law student and highly intelligent. So he used his knowledge of the law as his main source of power. By the time America had caught wind of the Black Panther, they were more organized and polished than ever. They had developed this uniform of a black leather jacket, a black beret, a fro and black sunglasses, which scared white America shitless. But they looked fucking hot. Any aspect of capitalism that contributed to a negative black experience, the Black Panthers were on that shit. They protested rent evictions, they petitioned for stoplights at dangerous intersections, and they provided free meals. They even published their own newspaper. So by this time, conservatives in the house are clamoring for gun control because they are terrified of these well-read, unapologetic, black armed teenagers everywhere. I absolutely cannot say it enough that the majority of Black Panthers were under the age of 25. These were young black radicals that were doing this. Soon, through racist propaganda, the Black Panther Party became a symbol of black aggression and terrorism amongst white America. I remember my mom even telling me that they were equivalent to the KKK when I was eight. So yeah, the Black Panthers scared the shit out of white people. You know, Seal and Newton didn't give a fuck though. So Seal led a group of armed Panthers into the California State House where they were discussing this anti-gun bill. This led to the unjust arrest and six month incarceration of Bobby Seal. After this event, conservatives finally got what they wanted and Reagan passed a bill called the Panther Bill that made it illegal for civilians to carry loaded weapons in public. This also marks the beginning of heavy surveillance of the Panthers by the FBI. The FBI will be important later. At this point, Newton is freaking out with his right hand man in prison. So he's like, Seal, what the fuck are we gonna do about this? You know, and Seal from prison, he's like, don't worry about it, blood. Like, we'll take care of it. I got it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> well, before Seal's sentence is even over, Huey ends up in prison. 
On October 28, 1967, after an officer called for backup, nine shots were exchanged between Newton and police. Newton was injured, but the cop was dead. And in 1960, I mean, even now, killing a cop was some serious shit. Huey was quickly arrested, thrown in prison, charged with murder, and is now facing the death penalty. I'm not mad. I just had to refilm like half of this. I'm not mad. Enter Eldridge Cleaver, the Minister of Information. With the two main faces of the party in prison, Cleaver took leadership. Cleaver was a charismatic, unapologetic, well-spoken man who seemed to be as well-received as his predecessors. In addition to Eldridge, his wife Kathleen Cleaver also became a super important face in the party. She spoke at rallies, she spoke to the press, and she fought tirelessly for the release of Newton with her husband. Though the Panthers were growing in infamy, they were also growing in support. After aiding Cleaver in a shootout with police, a 17-year-old boy named Bobby Sutton was shot in the middle of the street by police with his arms raised. His funeral was attended by thousands, even Marlon Brando. After this, approval for the Panthers is through the fucking roof. Cleaver is nominated to run for president by the Peace and Freedom Party of America. Cleaver in general was just being really well received. I mean, he was the only guy who had the balls to get on live television and say fuck you to Ronald Reagan in 1967. It's like, it's so important to understand how gangsta Cleaver was to so many black people. Like he was a big, big, big deal. By the summer of 68, the Black Panther Party had grown to 50,000 members and Newton was charged to two to 15 years in prison for the death of the policeman. Police are also in the middle of trying to arrest Cleaver, but Cleaver just pieces the fuck out and leaves America. Like nobody knows where he goes. Bye. But Seal is free now, and he's going to take advantage of the newly found platform that the Black Panthers have. He institutes a plethora of social programs. One of their most important being the free breakfast program. Through this program, the Black Panthers fed over 6,000 kids in over 49 American cities. And by the end of the year, the Black Panther Party had literally every social program you could think of. They had established free clinics, food shelves, liberation schools. In many ways, the Black Panther Party provided the blueprint for many of the social programs that we take for granted today. I mean, literally, I had no idea that the Black Panther Parties were responsible for my free orange juice at school. Yeah! Unfortunately, this was the beginning of the end for the Black Panther Party as FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover had pushed for more aggressive measures to be placed against the Black Panther Party. The FBI was ruthless, sending in Black informants to every Panther meeting. Hoover spoke specifically of his fear of a Black Messiah who might unify the people like Newton or Cleaver did. So, to combat this, the FBI positioned another Black nationalist group, us, against the Black Panthers effectively assassinating a bunch of Black Panther leaders through us because of course it was later revealed that the Black nationalist group US was working with the FBI. Over the next month, the FBI raids every Black Panther Party chapter in America, systemically weakening their leadership by arresting some of the most important members at the time. And then after the murder of a Black FBI informant by Panthers, mostly white radicals, they weren't even Black Panthers, to be honest. The blame was placed on SEAL. When he got to court, of course, they denied him an attorney of his choice. So Seal was like, fuck it, I'll defend myself. And the judge, of course, like fought against it, even though he has a right to, a constitutional right to. And Seal just kept fighting. He kept speaking over the judge, calling him a fascist, calling him a pig, saying if he wouldn't let him defend himself, he was a bigot. And so the judge bound and gagged him in the courtroom so that he wouldn't be able to speak. And this pissed off many Americans. Americans will put up with a lot. Misogyny and racism, now that's fine. But you go against a man's constitutional rights and you got another thing coming. The Black Panther Party almost seemed to be getting a second win though through another strong leader in the Chicago chapter named Fred Hampton. Chicago! Hampton's main strategy of growth for the Panthers was fucking genius. By organizing local gangs under the BPP, he unified their power and centralized a goal. Fred Hampton was on the verge of taking over Chicago, and the government couldn't let that happen. On December 3rd, a supposed FBI arms raid resulted in Fred Hampton and his bodyguard being shot dead in his own safe house. Fred was shot to death asleep in his bed beside his fiance who was nine months pregnant with their child. 
It was later revealed that an FBI informant had slipped a roofie into his drink earlier that night, making sure he slept through the raid. It was also later discussed that to prove he was dead, Chicago PD planted two final rounds into his head and then said, there, he's good and dead. The police also killed Mark Clark, who was guarding Hampton. They also severely beat and arrested anybody else who was in the house and then charged them with assault of a police officer. So let me say that to you again. The American government saw a threat to their system of white oppression and they went out of their way to, to kill this man in his sleep, not even giving him the fair fight of him being fucking conscious. Our government did that and they admit to that. That is plain public information you can access on any fucking computer. Literally, he was, on, he was on the verge of creating a kind of black systemic power that existed beyond the confines of this white bureaucracy. Oh, and by the way, the Panthers didn't fire a single shot that night. For the Black Panther Party, the murder of Hampton confirmed what they already knew. The police wanted to kill them and bureaucracy would protect their right to do it. And you know, surprisingly, this pissed a lot of Americans off. The targeting of the Black Panther Party was in the middle of every headline for a couple weeks there. I mean, it was on newspapers, magazines, TV. Kind of weird that we seem to be keep, that we keep getting enraged by the same shit. It's almost like it never changes. Corruption was at the front and center of American eyes and they did not like it. After immense public pressure, Newton is finally freed. He is greeted by crowds of thousands cheering and screaming in celebration. Unfortunately, this would be the last victory of the Black Panther Party. After Huey, after Huey got out of prison, he had a complete shift in ideology. He was now anti-gun and the idea of arming the people, while Cleaver, who had reappeared in Algeria with his wife and a brand new baby, was doubling down on violent responses to fascism. The FBI, of course, takes advantage of this eternal conflict and starts sending letters to Cleaver and Newton pretending to be one another, talking hella shit, and the party splits. After this, the party dwindles into nothing. Newton develops a serious addiction to cocaine that deteriorates his relationship with Bobby Seale. Through the same mechanisms of oppression that the Black Panther Party was fighting, corruption, violence, and manipulation, the U.S. government successfully destroys the biggest and most impactful Black liberation and empowerment movement there ever was. Today, there is no Black Panther Party as it was then, but they still hold an amazingly powerful place in American counterculture history. The Black pa Panther Party in many, many ways already pushed us towards the 10-point plan that Seal and Newton had originally outlined. forgot to do a good outro but I just wanted to say very quickly as always any sources that I have for you guys will be in the description below as well as all of my socials please follow me on everything especially Instagram because that's where I ask questions about my YouTube channel um but yeah that's all I wanted to say thank you so much for watching and until next time comrades